Today we're doing an iPhone 16 Pro Max charging speed test, comparing all of the Apple chargers for both wire charging and MagSafe wireless charging. So for wired charging, we're testing out all of the iPhone power adapters Apple currently sells, including the 20 watt, 30 watt, and 35 watt power adapters, to see just how much of a difference the new reported around 30 watts maximum wired charging speed makes. And for MagSafe wireless charging, we're testing the new MagSafe charger that now supports up to 25 watt wireless charging on the 16 Pro Max, paired with a 30 watt power adapter so we could take advantage of the fastest speeds possible. And we're also testing the original MagSafe charger that we've had for the past four years that supports up to 15 watt wireless charging just using a standard 20 watt power adapter. We're using the very same iPhone 16 Pro Max for all five of these tests, starting from totally dead for all tests. We have no charge limit enabled on it and optimized battery charging and clean energy charging are also disabled to ensure the phone charges straight up to 100% for all of these tests. Now, I highly recommend keeping Keeping optimized battery charging enabled to help preserve your iPhone's battery health, I just have it temporarily disabled for this video. So we're checking in at 10 a minute increments here. So something important to note about iPhone charging is that the charging speed never stays the same throughout the whole charging process. Even though the 16 Pro Max here is now able to be charged at around 30 watts with wired charging and can be charged at around 25 watts with the new MagSafe wireless charging, it's not gonna charge at these maximum speeds the whole time. Throughout different stages of the charging process, and depending on what you do on your iPhone while it charges, the charging speed will fluctuate. The most noticeable fluctuation being the charging speed slowdown that always occurs towards the end of the charging process as the phone gets closer to 100% charged. Something else important to note with the 16 Pro Max here is the fact that, as I mentioned, the maximum wire charging speed caps out around 30 watts, and the maximum wireless MagSafe charging speed caps out around 25 watts. So just to be perfectly clear, if you have a power adapter that's 30 watts, you don't need to get a higher wattage power adapter. Now, I am including the 35 watt power adapter for wire charging in this video just because Apple currently sells it, but as you'll see throughout this video, you're not getting any speed improvements on the 16 Pro Max using any power adapter higher than 30 watts. So in terms of wired charging, as you're seeing, the 30 watt power adapter does offer a solid improvement in charging speed in comparison to the 20 watt power adapter that a lot of iPhone users currently use. It's not a huge improvement by any means, but it is noticeable. I'd say the average person shouldn't go out and buy a new 30 watt power adapter if you already have a 20 watt adapter, but if you're someone who really cares about charging your iPhone at the fastest speeds possible, the 30 watt power adapter does offer a nice speed boost. And while it's important to have a reliable charging solution at home like the chargers we're testing today, it's also important to have a reliable portable charging solution for when you're out and about, and that's where today's sponsor Romos comes in. The Bag Carry wireless power bank not only allows you to charge up your iPhone, but also your Apple Watch and your AirPods, both wireless using a strong magnetic connection at up to 15 watts or using wire charging at up to 30 watts using the built-in USB-C cable that allows you to charge up your iPhone at the fastest speed possible. You can also charge two devices simultaneously, charging one with wireless charging and another with wired charging. So if you're out with a friend who also needs to charge up, you'll be ready to go. And thanks to the MagCarry power bank featuring two USB-C ports, you can plug in another USB-C cable and charge three devices simultaneously. And you could also use the MagCarry power bank to charge up your MacBook Air. As someone who travels a lot when working, it's nice to know I can charge up my MacBook on the go if something work-related comes up. The MagCarry power bank supports MagSafe wireless charging with a 15N magnetic force ensuring a strong connection to your iPhone. So you can rest assured it'll stay attached even if you throw your iPhone into your backpack or bag while it's charging. The MagCarry power bank packs a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity to ensure all your devices will remain charged up all day, whether you're traveling, at work, or on the go. And recharge Charging the power bank itself to 100% takes just 90 minutes. And the power bank features built in protections against overheating, overcurrent, over voltage, and short circuits to ensure safe charging every time. It remains at a totally safe temperature throughout the charging process. It's also very compact and lightweight, super comfortable to carry around, and when used with the included built in cable, the dual USB C ports double as a handle for easy carrying of the power bank. I personally love products that work seamlessly with all my devices. And the Mag Carry power bank here keeps all the devices that I use every day charged up, including my iPhone, Apple Watch, AirPods, and even my MacBook. So if you're interested in checking out the Mag Carry wireless power bank, check out the link in the video description down below. 
Big thanks to Romas for sponsoring this video. And continuing with the test here, I'm honestly not that impressed with Apple's new 25 watt MagSafe charger that we're using with the 30 watt power adapter, as it honestly isn't offering a drastic improvement over the original MagSafe charger with the 20 watt power adapter, not consistently at least. Towards the middle-ish of the charging process here, an advantage of a few percentage points starts to show with the 25 watt MagSafe charger over the 15 watt MagSafe charger, it eventually being 10 whole percentage points ahead at one point, but it evens out pretty shortly after. And all through the earlier parts of the charging process, it was also very close. So unfortunately, it doesn't end up being much of an improvement over the previous generation MagSafe charger in terms of the total charge time. So with all the wired chargers having finished the test, we're left with only the two MagSafe wireless chargers. Let me know what charger you guys use down below in the comments. I'm always curious to know whether you guys prefer wired or wireless charging and how important fast charging is to you. So once again, as we get closer and closer to hitting 100% charged, the charging process does slow down, and at the 2 hours and 40 minute check-in, the 25 watt MagSafe charger charges the 16 Pro Max to 100%, but at the very next check-in, at 2 hours and 50 minutes into the test, the older 15 watt MagSafe charger also charges the 16 Pro Max to 100%. So again, not much of a difference in the total charge time for the MagSafe chargers here. So here are the final results. In terms of wired charging for most people, any power adapter 20 watts or above will pack more than enough charging speed for the 16 Pro Max. Although, if being able to charge your iPhone at the absolute fastest speed possible is important to you, upgrading to a 30 watt power adapter will give you a noticeable speed boost. In terms of MagSafe wireless charging, it's honestly tough to justify upgrading to the new 25 watt MagSafe charger, as it just didn't make that much of a speed difference on the 16 Pro Max, especially considering if you currently use a 20 watt power adapter, to even take advantage of those faster 25 watt speeds, you'll also have to upgrade your power adapter to a 30 watt power adapter. But if you're super committed to using MagSafe charging and also want the very fastest MagSafe charging available, the new MagSafe charger will get your 16 Pro Max charged up a little bit quicker. It's also worth noting that since we only checked in every 10 minutes, these times aren't exact to the minute. Also, if you're wondering why the 35 watt charger shows as 10 minutes slower than the 30 watt charger, I'd honestly chalk that up to random variations that will always occur in tests like this. There's always gonna be minor factors that throw things a percent or two off in these tests. Again, any power adapter 30 watts or above will charge the 16 Pro Max at the same speed. And guys, that just about wraps it up for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll catch you in the next one.